When the money hits the table, that's when you find out real character of people. Do you regret selling it? It had to get done. I was in there for the money. Business people, they say they love their business. Bullshit. What was the exit? Billion and a half. Was it worth it, all the work and the worrying? Almost $120 billion company. Okay, but it's not a trillion yet. <laughs> Have you ever wondered whether all the hard work and sacrifice to build a billion dollar business is even worth it? Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk to the founders of Kinko's, Uggs Boots, and Qualcomm to ask them how they built their billion dollar empires and whether or not they have any regrets. How is it to become a billionaire? I felt great. I'll tell you a funny story. My wife over here bought a, ex-wife, bought a TV cabinet for $35,000 and it always me off. That cabinet was so goddamn expensive. I was very upset with that cabinet. Sold the business, I'm happy with the cabinet. <laughs> how do you use curiosity to come up with business ideas? And how did that help you come up with Kinko's? Oh, I was at SC and they were in line at SC making Xerox copies. And I figured why wouldn't the same people be in line in Santa Barbara? I didn't have to take a lot of LSD and ruminate over the damn idea. What are you best known for? I think I'm best known for being the founder of UGG. I was surfing up at Malibu one day and it was you know, October, November, the water was getting really cold. and and I was pulling on my sheepskin boots after surfing and I just got goosebumps and I went, oh my God, there's no Ugg boots in America. And I was with my buddy and I just said to him, hey man, we've got to go into business. We're going to be instant millionaires. We had no idea that it would take 20 years. <laughs> How did you feel the day it closed, the day you, the deal closed? It was great. Really interesting day because, you know, when the money hits the table, that's when you find out real character of people and a lot of greed came in the first you know, the couple of days leading up to that. Everyone's you know, best friends until the money hits the table and then it's like, oh, oh, it's all me. Really interesting. What did you invent as a part of it? Oh, uh, what I'm known for is the Viterbi algorithm. Is this the basis for 5G technology for cell phones? No, it was a basis for 2G and 3G. It also had some impact on 4G. How did you come up with the idea for Qualcomm? Linkabit, our first company, came out of our university research. When we started Qualcomm, because we had limited capital, we went after government contracts. How many people work at Qualcomm? I think at peak, 30 or 40,000. And then the valuation I just looked up, almost $120 billion company. Okay, but it's not a trillion yet. <laughs> <laughs> How was it when you received the money that day? Like, what happens? Oh, it's just euphoric. Like, So you actually felt relief? Yeah, yes. Oh, you don't understand the luxury of waking up every morning and not worrying and thinking about what you want to think about. I like that part the best. Did you, how'd you celebrate? Probably had a few cocktails. <laughs> Maybe smoked a joint or two. I just remember always being stressed out. And there's a lot more to worry in when you have your business. I was ready for it to be sold a lot pr long prior to my, when I sold it. If you had to describe how people should live their lives in decades, how would you think about that? My mother said, honey, in your 20s, try everything. In your 30s, figure out what you do best. In your 40s, make money from what you do best and try not to do too much in your 50s. In your 20s, you really do care what people think about you. You get to be 40, you don't really care what people think about you. Then you get to be 60, you realize no one ever thought of you in the first place. So when you received the money from Uggs, like how did you enjoy the money? My wife and I had been just eking it out for 20 years. You know, the first few was really, really tough. And then suddenly we got millions in the bank. But our lifestyle did not change. Did We didn't go to more expensive restaurants, we didn't do big vacation, we, we just carried on with life. What, what was your expectation from the beginning? I was in there for the money, and it was always for sale. It just I sold it in 1997, but every day of that business was out there, it was for sale. Business people, they say they love their business. Bull You can enjoy your business. Once you love it, you're losing your objectivity, and you can't let that business own you. You own it. What are some of the silly ways you spent your money? Frivolous things I bought? Yeah. yeah. Or on the other side. I bought this goddamn airplane to be a big shot. No, that, that cost me a lot of money. Or how much was the plane that you bought? $22 million. How did you enjoy your money? I had a Ferrari for a while because my kids talked me into it, but uh, I didn't like it. It was the Modena 360, I think. I got rid of it after 10 years. I had the best Mercedes that I could find at the time, a CLS 550. It was just like, looked like a dart, you know? It was such a beautiful car. I've been through that, done that. I, I don't need that for my ego anymore. You know, as long as the rent, I know I've got no problems with the rent being paid for a year or two. That's really all the money you need. The, the trick is to be happy when you do that sort of stuff. 
you know, because I know a lot of millionaires, they're the most miserable people I know, you know. Taking a step back for someone starting out, how do you think someone today can become a millionaire? Use your eyes and your intuition. But unfortunately, we're too damn rational. A lot of times it's intuitive. and We don't trust our instinct. Why does a customer want to buy something? You see all these big shots, they think that uh, they built the business. Their customers built your business. What are you observing in terms of business ideas in today's economy? Oh, there's so many. Kids are too highfalutin. They want to do all these highfalutin things. It's just down and dirty stuff. Like every time you park your car, why isn't somebody washing it for you? Why don't you go to the place and say, I'll have open a car wash for you. Charge you $40, you go to lunch, two hours later you get a car wash. I mean, why, what's, hap what's happening to all that little hustle? What's interesting about the stories in this video is that no matter how big the business becomes, it's always about starting right now and having a promising business idea. But what if you want to start a business and you don't got a great idea? We are working with Trends.co, who y'all loved so much last time, they have come back to hook us up with the sponsorship. Now they have a whole team of analysts who are constantly nerding out, researching the most profitable industries and business opportunities, and send those to your inbox every single week. On top of that, they also bring on successful CEOs and entrepreneurs for live business trainings and Q and A's to teach you skills to build a company. And Trends hooked us up with a special offer y'all went crazy for last time, they're doing it again. Trends.co slash Noah K. You can try out their community and get access to their business ideas for seven days for one buck. That is trends.co slash Noah K to start your seven day trial for uno dollar. Enjoy. Do you have regrets of like that you work too much? There's a song, shouldn't regret the rain. I don't regret anything. It <laughs> sounds like Frank Sinatra is, I did it my way and I have no regrets. What regrets do you have from that time? Well, I was under so much pressure financially. I didn't say enough thank yous. I work with really wonderful people. And uh, I didn't say thank you enough to him. When you're in the middle of it all, it's just hard to be grateful. You're just so, have so much pressure. I was just internally focused on paying my bills and all that. And I, I was jovial and very convivial to the managers. The executives, they could feel my fury a little bit. Was it worth it, all the work and the worrying? Now, in my 40s, I didn't sleep right. My neck always hurt and I had bad gas. <laughs> now. I don't have any gas. I sleep like a baby and my neck doesn't hurt. Do you, do you regret selling it or how do you feel about that? No, um, it was growing so fast. I just didn't have the knowledge of finance to be able to forecast the production requirements. When it got to about 15 million, I just thought, you know, I got to find somebody who can really take this and run with it. Because if I had tried to hold on to it, and, you know, I would have failed miserably that year because of my success. Do you wish you would have like worked less or done anything different with the experience? I couldn't have worked less because it had to get done. I wouldn't say I overworked, I, but I was always busy. I, my, my mind never switched off from uh, Overall, it was really enjoyable, you know, running my own business and having really good staff and, and everyone. It was, it was like a team of uh, people on this really cool project. How would you like to be remembered as? I had an interesting life and I want to be remembered for being uh, the head of my family and having uh, a warm family. How would you like to be remembered? The most common compliment I get, and it's the highest compliment I get when I come off stage, is people just go, oh my God, you're so real, you know? And that, I think, is how I want to be remembered. I think I'm doing a good job. <laughs> what makes a great life? You know what success is? Success is when your children want to be with you when they're adults. How many people could be, have all that bullshit and their kids don't come home for the holidays? Come on, I've been called asshole, dumb shit my whole life. The most cool thing I've ever been called in my entire life is dad. If you like this video, you are going to love this video right up here where I knock on millionaires doors and ask them how to get rich. And make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uncle Noah loves you and I'll see you out there. Pew pew.